This is Dr. Dan Keller for the American Association for Cancer Research. Dr. Lowe, the AACR annual meeting is coming up in San Diego from April 5th to 9th. What can attendees expect to see this year? Well, I think we'll definitely have a very exciting meeting. We put together a great organizing committee that has a broad expertise in all aspects of cancer research. And I think um, people should expect to see really top basic uh, cancer research, translational, uh, and even clinical work. Are there any new noteworthy innovations? Uh, yeah, Charles and I tried to put together a few things to make um, the meeting a bit more accessible for younger investigators. Uh, we've uh, incorporated some special talks uh, from young investigators, so-called next-gen stars, uh, to uh, give talks alongside um, senior investigators in some of the major symposia. Uh, and uh, we're trying out um, a, a number of other different uh, forums and formats uh, that we think the will make the meeting very exciting. The theme for the meeting is harnessing breakthroughs, targeting cures. Can you explain why this theme was chosen and what's the current status of cancer research? Yeah, I, I sort of look at the um, AACR historically as really been a champion for basic cancer research, but times are changing. I think now some of that basic knowledge has led to translations um, that have um, started to impact the clinic. And I think the, the, the uh, title of harnessing breakthroughs and targeting cures really emphasizes what I see now as a much more seamless integration between basic translational and clinical research. What key breakthroughs will be presented at the meeting? Uh, well, we expect, uh, I think, breakthroughs on all fronts. Um, there are several areas that we're particularly excited about, sort of so-called hot topics um, that have been uh, uh, really emerging as, as becoming part of the forefront of uh, cancer research. We think there'll be some uh, very exciting advances in the field of epigenetics. This is sort of modes of gene regulation uh, that are now starting to point towards uh, new therapeutic approaches that will begin to uh, impact patients. Um, we're very excited about um, the area of cancer metabolism. I think we now appreciate that many of the genes, the oncogenes, the tumor suppressor genes that we've studied for many years converge on um, affecting basic cellular processes um, that perhaps um, represent new therapeutic opportunities. Uh, I think also there's been a great deal of excitement about uh, cancer immunotherapy, trying to harness uh, the immune system to attack uh, cancer cells, and there's a lot of advances there, both uh, on the basic and clinical end. What advances to be unveiled at the meeting are driving innovation? Uh, well, technology is always um, an important driver of innovation, and I think uh, there's been a number of technologies that uh, have really um, come of age. One I think everybody's familiar with is genomics technologies, the ability to sequence uh, normal and cancer genomes at really an unprecedented rate, and we're really starting to reap the benefits of all of that analysis. Um, but there's also um, technologies um, that are uh, really enabling researchers to do better cancer biology. Um, so for example, there's new um, technologies to culture either normal or human cancer cells uh, to study them in really unprecedented ways. There's technologies to modify uh, genes in cells that allow us to understand what they do, what their normal function is, how their alteration uh, gives rise to tumors. And there's, there's um, new sort of engineering technology, so-called nanotechnology, that um, really is um, enabling research um, to image cancers, but also perhaps eventually treat them with new um, uh, types of therapies. Who should attend the annual meeting? Well, I think um, the annual meeting has uh, something for just about anybody uh, who's interested in the latest in cancer research. Um, of course, it's a great opportunity for students and trainees um, to network and, and to hear really very broadly about what's going on in cancer research. It's very easy when you're in the laboratory to get focused on what you're doing day to day, and it's always good uh, to see uh, the bigger perspective. I think for um, uh, scientists, uh, principal investigators, uh, it's a great opportunity to network. And again, um, we're appreciating that cancer is a very, it's becoming a very multidisciplinary effort. And so um, the AACR meeting is a great place to sort of um, interact with colleagues that may not be the ones 
that you talk to every day. Um, for clinicians, again, I think it's becoming uh, more and more of a must-go-to meeting. Um, all of this basic research is really now creating a rationale to uh, target uh, cancers, you know, in a much more intelligent way. Um, and I think also for industry, uh, there um, are uh, uh, technologies, new approaches, new therapies um, that really um, can drive uh, the drugs of the future. And so I think this is the place to hear about all of that. What benefits from the annual meeting will young researchers derive? I think there's um, um, two things that, that I can think of offhand. One is obviously the networking um, opportunities. And one of the things that we'd like to do this year is to really uh, make that easier for uh, trainees to interact with each other in this relatively, um, well, this extremely large meeting. Um, and secondly, I think it's a, um, to gain the enthusiasm we all feel um, with the potential for cancer research and impacting patients over the next uh, uh, years. Uh, uh, young researchers have a lot of opportunities. Uh, they uh, can go into business, they can uh, go into policy, they can go into law. We'd like them to stay uh, in cancer research and focus on uh, this problem because we think that uh, their uh, input in the future is going to have a big impact. What do young researchers describe as their greatest challenges and how is the AACR positioned to help? Yeah, I think overwhelmingly there's a lot of concern among young investigators today about um, the commitment um, there is to, to funding research in the future. Um, not only research that would have an immediate impact on uh, disease, for example, cancer, but to build the foundation, the basic research um, that ultimately provides the breakthroughs that uh, we harness translationally uh, to come up with better therapies. So I think there's a lot of concern that there isn't sufficient funding to do that. It raises um, uh, skepticism that research uh, might be a career for these young people in the future. I think the ACR can have a big impact on how uh, their attitudes moving forward. Um, first, again, by creating uh, and disseminating the enthusiasm we all feel uh, towards uh, the potential for breakthroughs in cancer research, but also um, by uh, lobbying government uh, and trying to convince the public of the importance um, of this research mission. Do you have any other thoughts on the annual meeting that you would like to share with us? So I, I sort of think of the annual meeting as um, a yearly benchmark of uh, where we can sort of step back and assess uh, where we're at. And I think this year will be no uh, exception. I think um, we will realize that uh, in the last 12 months, we've made a lot of progress. I think it's also a time to collect our thoughts and think about um, where we have to go. So in 12 months from now, um, we're closer to the ultimate goal of really impacting uh, patient care. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. For the American Association for Cancer Research, I'm Dr. Dan Keller.